Hey everybody, so we had our first meetup, didn't quite go as to plan, obviously since I'm doing uh, a recorded video rather than doing it live. Um, we'll figure out the bugs and get it going hopefully a little bit better next time. Uh, but that being said, I'd still like to thank our uh, host, which was Third Channel. We are still looking for other places to host in the future. Uh, you know, in different places would be good. We have a, a you know one in mind. Um, we're also looking for people to talk so that we can you know keep the meetup going. Uh, but that being said, I'm going to get into uh, the main talk, which was about intro to Grails 3 or Spring Boot with batteries included. So uh, basically what I decided to do was this intro video followed by a bunch of shorter videos and see how that goes. So thanks. So picking up from there, let's see. We thanked our host. Uh, we said we're looking for new speakers and places to talk. Um, let's see. Uh, we'd also, you know, just like to see uh, what people are looking for in talks. Uh, see if we can get people to talk about things. So I'll put that out there. Um, meetups and other conferences. Uh, I don't know of other meetups, but I do know of there's uh, some other conferences. Uh, GR8 Conf, which is in July, which is a really good conference in Minneapolis. Uh, this is a, usually somewhat cheaper than uh, some of the other conferences, like uh, the Spring 1 2 GX. Uh, it's $500. Uh, Spring 1 2 GX actually got split into two conferences uh, a Spring Developers Conference, I believe, and the G3 Summit. Uh, G3 Summit, which will be uh, towards the end of the year, end of November into December. This one's a little bit bigger uh, than the GR8 uh, conference in terms of uh, it's a little bit longer. Um, and hopefully will be similar to what was in uh, the Spring 1 2 GX. So, okay, moving on, uh, we have no jobs to announce, uh, but, uh, you know, in future meetups, we'd like to encourage people to uh, announce jobs as long as they're coming from actual people that work at actual companies, not from recruiters and headhunters. We don't want to encourage that, uh, you know, recruiters and headhunters, but, you know, from any people who, uh, you know, work at companies. Um, another thing that would be interesting to me is just to see uh, how many people who are watching this are using Grails. Uh, are you using Grails 3, uh, 2.5, 2.4, or something older? Um, you know, if you can put that uh, in the comments, that would be really great, um, just for my own personal interest. Okay, so moving on, uh, we are talking about Grails 3. So I felt that it needed a little bit of history to go around with it. Um, so the way Grails got started was uh, this idea that was passed down, um, passed around on a forum of like, hey, couldn't we do something with Groovy, uh, you know, to be the answer to Rails? And that's kind of how Groovy on Grails was uh, born. But uh, that only lasted for a short time because uh, I think it was uh, David. I'm not even going to say his name, but you can see it here. Uh, oh, Hanson. Uh, you know, supposedly said something about it, and you know, then they decided we're just going to call it Grails and be done with it. People still get this confused right to this day, and will call it Groovy on Grails or get confused when you say Grails and say Rails. You have to correct them. It is what it is. So uh, that went on for quite a while, and eventually. Uh, what happened was uh, Spring Boot came along, and Spring Boot was actually inspired some uh, somewhat by Grails, and was uh, basically did does a lot of the convention over configuration. It doesn't take it quite as far as Grails does, but that's kind of where it came from. And I heard that there was uh, some type of collaboration between the two teams. I don't know as how much, but uh, that's just what I heard. Then after that happened. Grails actually rebased itself on top of Spring Boot. So that's, you know, where the uh, topic comes from is, you know, gr you know, intro to Grails 3 or Spring Boot with batteries included because Grails adds a lot that uh, Spring Boot doesn't have out of the box. So, and I'll be talking about that as we go on through uh, these talks. So, 
why should you use Grails? Um, and I think thought this was uh, a good question to ask and try to answer right in this intro. Um, it gives you a very uh, rapid development because it has convention over configuration. Um, but at the same time, it's very flexible because underneath it is just Spring Boot, which is just Spring. Uh, so, you know, you can do all the configuration and change it. And I just saw that uh, I typed this up quickly and there are spelling errors all over this. So I'll fix that before I actually post this, but not in this video. Um, you know, the other thing is it's built on industry standards like Spring Boot, Hibernate, and Gradle. Uh, it's very easy to deploy uh, because you can just build it to a WAR file, drop it on Tomcat, and, you know, you're up and running. Uh, it also can be built to a runnable jar. Um, that being said, uh, it also has Tomcat built in, which is uh, something that, you know, Spring Boot added, which Grails had before Spring Boot, but it allows you to just be able to run it in a dev environment very quickly. Um, there are lots of plugins available for Grails 3 uh, that just extend its functionality. It has a very vibrant plugin com community. And uh, building a plugin is actually very similar to actually building uh, an application itself. So once you know how to do one, you know, you could take some of what you've done and actually pull that out into a plugin, and the plugin is essentially just like a mini Grails application. So it makes that's why there are you know so many of them available at this point. Now moving on, why should you upgrade? You know, say you're using Grails two uh, or even older at this point. Um, well, anything below Grails three is now just in maintenance mode. So you're not getting any new features. It's not really going to be upgraded, as far as I know. Uh, I don't think they're even uh, adding newer versions of Groovy to the old 2.5 line. I could be wrong about that, but I, I don't think they're going to be doing that from here on out. It's just in maintenance mode, just bug fixes. So if you want something that's a little bit more maintained, you might want to migrate to Grails 3. Um, that being said, most of the major plugins have been ported to Grails 3, uh, like Spring Security, uh, the asset pipeline, um, and, and many, many others. And it seems like there, this has picked up momentum in the oh, probably the, the past year or so. So there's a lot of them have been ported over. Uh, some that haven't been ported over just because uh, they dealt with like build issues that kind of Gradle, uh, which is now, you know, under Grails, just addresses. So some, and some of them hadn't been, you know, like like anything that's been around for so long, some of them haven't been maintained in years and will never get ported. Um, the way I look at plugins, though, is, uh, you know, some of them are just great to use out of the box, like Spring Security. And others are really good for a good starting point, and you might want to, like, you know, kind of branch off of that and do whatever you have to do. So that's kind of how I look at the plugins. Um, another good reason to upgrade is uh, because uh, Gradle, uh, which is now uh, the default uh, build system, well actually it's the only build system, uh, is much faster uh, to get up and running. If you've ever run uh, with Grails uh, in the 2.x line or below, you know how long it takes for it to get up and running you know, when you want to just debug something. And so now, you know, having um, Gradle, it is much faster. Obviously, it depends on how many plugins you have in your application, but it's much faster. It's much more flexible. Uh, they built in uh, better scripting support uh, for, you know, writing little, you know, build scripts and things of that nature. Um, the downside, uh, I would say, that you know, I, I uh, highlight here is it depends on how big your app is. Now I've done a migration myself, going from uh, it was, I think, uh, 2.4.2 to 3.0.11, and it went fairly smoothly. But the application I was upgrading was, you know, it, it I would say that it was not really huge. There wasn't a lot going on in it. Uh, it didn't like stray from like the normal path of Grails. Like so, depending on how uh, far your application, uh, you know, kind of 
uh, goes off and does, you know, special things, that might bite you in an upgrade. Um, it may not. Like, so you'll have to see what, you know, what works and what doesn't. The best way to find out is just to try to do uh, uh, the upgrade and see how far that you, far you get. Um, and, you know, see what breaks. Uh, they do have a guide, which uh, I will p- add a link uh, to that in these notes at some point. Uh, so, you know, uh, you'll see, you know, how you can upgrade. And actually, I think I already have that further in this uh, list. So I'll talk about that more uh, in the next video. So why didn't I use Grails? Uh, why did I use Grails 3.0.x and not 3.1.x? Well, specifically because uh, it broke the IntelliJ support, and I use IntelliJ for my IDE, and I thought for the presentation, I really want to be able to show you, you know, some of the features and how they work. And, you know, in 3.1, it's like, it'll run, it's it's fine, I can debug it, but, you know, you don't get, like, some of the autocomplete stuff, uh, which there is this uh, nice little U-Track issue, so... Everyone, uh, you know, sign up for, you know, uh, IntelliJ's U-Track and vote up this issue. So that was just a a good overview uh, intro. Uh, Basically, I'm going to stop it here. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to talk about startup and we'll go from there.